You know, when we first started, we wanted a name that would let you know exactly who we are without us having to explain who we are, <laughs> you know, and Snotty Nose Res Kids just seems so fitting because A, it represents where we come from, you know, small town res boys from the Northwest, you know, and, you know, when you hear the name Snotty Nose Res Kids, it's like, yeah, we may be rough and raw around the edges, but at the same time, there's beauty in that, you know, and what inspired the name, it was just us, it was just our experiences growing up, you know, and living young, wild, and free, basically, and just carefree, and not caring at all if there's, like, snot crusties or snot dripping off our face and whatnot, so, yeah, we just wanted something that would really not only represent us, but we knew that, you know, it's a name that you can't forget once you hear it. You hear Snotty Nose Res Kids or SNRK, it's, it's stuck in your head, so, <laughs> you know, we couldn't think of a better name. can't hate where we're from because where we're from made us who we are you know and like how it influenced us is you know words words can't express fully how much our homelands and the community has influenced us so growing up um no matter what it was whether it was school basketball um music our family members our cousins are like friends, everybody, they always got behind what it was that we did, no matter what it was. We come from like a very strong community. So uh, like without that community, we would not be doing music today. So with that said, um, as much as we can, like I don't come from like a very traditional per se background, but my parents are land defenders. I come from a very strong uh, family of land, land defenders and people that live off the land and lived off our territory. So that comes out in my music. Uh, I was always taught to be proud of who I am and where I come from, and that comes out in my music. Um, I'm not very, very good with the language or like our traditional dances and stuff, but I'm learning. So that's starting to come out in our music. And with Snotty Nose Res Kids comes a uh, representation of everyone across Turtle Island. You know, we're just a small piece to a big moving part, but at the end of the day, uh, we're still a voice for the people. So that has to come out in our music as well. At the end of the day, we're still Haiza people, Haiza members, uh, but we represent a wider uh, group of people. I wish I was connected to all the elders back at home. But for me, you know, in our families, we're connected to, like, our grandmas and our grandpas and our aunties and our uncles. You know, they really pass on stories to us and tell us stories or let us know about the tradition and the culture and the land whenever, every single time that we go home, you know. And, you know, same thing with, like, knowledge keepers. You know, my sister is a part of of the program back in Kinnaman that's revitalizing the Heisla language, you know, and the same thing with my cousin Teresa, it's, it's beautiful to see, you know, and even though I'm the older brother to my sister, I still look up to her for that, you know, that inspires me so much to learn the language, you know, because to me, there's nothing more empowering and liberating is when you speak your native tongue, <laughs> you know, not just to be able to introduce yourself in your native tongue, but to actually know how to form sentences and how to have conversation with one another. Because my grandma speaks fluent Hazlakala. And, you know, we're kind of a little late to the party, but, you know, we're learning. and We're growing. And as far as them influencing us, so what role they play is, like, through, I don't know how to say it, like, the influence they have on us is, it makes us, it want, like, we want to help carry that tradition, you know? We want to help learn the language, and they're inspiring us to learn the language. They're inspiring us to learn the ceremonial ways of 
things of like going to cleanse in the river or going to cleanse in the ocean, you know, or what to do when it comes to feasts, you know, and or how to how to say a prayer in Heisla before going for a dip or having a meal, you know, so it's huge, man. It's huge. I think what's so unique and what sets us apart from other uh, hip hop artists within our genre, especially within Canada, and what sets our music apart is the fact that um, obviously we're talking about issues that a lot of people don't talk about, especially because we're First Nations and you know, like we've been there, we've lived this life. And obviously we grew up in a time where it wasn't cool to know native people. It wasn't cool to defend native people. And it was actually quite the opposite. So right now we're getting a lot of opportunities that a lot of other artists aren't getting. And we are very aware of that and very like grateful for it. But at the same time, you know, like there's a lot of like our, our consciousness and all of our uh, like, like how we talk about like the inequality and the injustices that have been put upon our people for years and years and years. That comes out in music that can be played in loud concerts, in clubs, in like, you know, like party places across Canada. So, and it doesn't matter if you're native or not, like we make music for everybody. And, you know, we're making it for indigenous people, but we're also trying to bring everybody together within our music. And that's something that hasn't been done before within uh, Native Hip Hop. Uh, yeah, it's been like a lot of times it's very dark when you listen to Native Hip Hop, but ours we're trying to like, we're trying to bring positive out of everything. So I think that's kind of like what sets us apart from a lot of the artists that we listen to. And also I got to add to that is one thing that we do is uh, when we're making a song at the back of our mind, there's all it's there's always a live set in mind. So we're always thinking about how we're going to make our live set better by putting out this album. What's gonna what's gonna make us bring people together and fill arenas up? You know, that's always like in the back of our mind as well. I feel like what's most unique about us is how we are able to tell our story, not just tell our story the way that we want it to be told, but to be authentic about it. You know, and to do it in a certain style that has never really been done before. You know, the mindset that, you know, me and Travs have taken along on this journey is don't play the game, change the game. It's just to be like unapologetically indigenous, I would say for us, what makes us most unique. Because, you know, we met artists that are like coming up or trying to, you know, get this thing going. And it's like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to tell anybody that I'm, I'm indigenous because then, then they won't listen to me. So I want to like build a fan base and then be like, yeah, I'm indigenous. Whereas like for us, we're like right out of the gate. You know, we're the Snide Nose Reds kids. This is who we are. Love it or hate it. But you will respect it. It's important to understand the history and the roots of hip hop and how it originated and where it comes from. You know, it's important to understand that it came from the struggles and the oppression of black people in North America, you know, and it's very important to honor and respect that, you know, and us as indigenous people, we went through oppression ourselves, you know, we went through genocide, we, you know, we've gone through systemic racism, you know, and it's important to honor that, it's important to respect that, you know, the roots of hip hop and where it came from, and, you know, it's important to honor and respect all those that paved the way for us today. You know, hip hop wouldn't be hip hop if it didn't start in the seventies. And for those people that decided to stand up and be the voice of the oppressed, you know, and I feel like that's why a lot of indigenous people really resonate with hip hop because hip hop was the voice of the oppressed. Right. So I feel like a lot of people don't realize how, hip-hop culture and indigenous culture are really parallel with one another. So if you look at the elements of hip-hop, number one, you have the MC, right? Well, indigenous culture, we have the storytellers. Hip-hop, you have the DJ. Well, we have our drummers. <laughs> you have the B-boys and the B-girls. Well, we have our dancers. You have the graffiti artists. We have our carvers. We have our painters. We have our drawers. You know, so they're really parallel with one another. 
And I feel like that's why a lot of indigenous people gradually and naturally gravitate towards hip hop. You know, shout out to Ernie Panicioli for that one. And yeah, you know what I mean? And as a non-black artist, it's very, very, very important to understand the history, to honor and respect the history of hip hop and understand its roots and where it comes from and to honor and acknowledge the great ones that have come before us and that have paved the way for us for what hip hop became today. So, yeah, learn the history, understand the roots, pay homage to those that came before you because hip hop wouldn't be without those that came before us. Facts. I feel like when, when you're making impactful music and you're making very like um, like conscious music, people do feel uncomfortable, especially when they take a look at their life and realize that maybe they have been part of the problem, whether they meant it or not. And it's okay to feel discomfort. It's okay to feel uncomfortable as long as you rectify it, as long as you make it better. Because, you know, like even for example, this album right here, The yeah, Average Savage, that was meant to show show people that um, like, you know, like movies like Disney movies, um, uh, like shows like Mickey Mouse, Pocahontas, Peter Pan, those all uh, try to take native people down and like make us look like we were less than human within those movies, within those TV shows. And even for me, like, I, I remember growing up, there was a lot of times where uh, even our own people would bully me. And my, my old man would always say, yo, it's because they've been taught to hate themselves within themselves. And until we grow out of that, we won't heal. We need to love ourselves before we can love our peers. And I feel like by us doing this within our music and making people feel uncomfortable, especially non-Indigenous people, uh, don't think about it as us trying to do that. We're trying to heal ourselves first. And if you feel uncomfortable, then maybe there's something that needs to be changed, something that needs to be unlearned and then relearned. And maybe our music can help you with that. Instead of sitting there and arguing with somebody for hours and hours, you know, I don't have the energy for that. <laughs> you know, so, okay, let's make a record for the next three to four minutes you're going to listen to what we have to say. And you're, we're going to make sure that you hear every single thing that we say. And some people aren't ready for that. Some people aren't ready to hear the raw history of North America. You know what I mean? A lot of people aren't ready for it. They think it's like the history of Canada and the United States is like all rainbows and sunshine. And like, oh, like people came over, they discovered this land and then yada, 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 right? And they want to ignore all the bad and horrific things that's happened, you know, the genocide that's happened, the colonization that's happened, the, the effects that we feel still today from the systemic racism, you know what I mean? So I think it's important for people, I mean, even if it makes them feel uncomfortable, I feel like it's important for them to hear exactly what's going on. You know, we want to let people know that, especially like with indigenous people reconciliation isn't just a land acknowledgement you know before any reconciliation happens you need to understand the raw history of this country you need to understand the raw history of indigenous people in north america before any reconciliation happens we need to acknowledge what happened you know and i feel like that's what we've been striving to do. There was actually a series of events that kind of uh, inspired that song to come together. Uh, first of all, we met uh, Conhus Manuel, who is a, a Swetnik uh, land defender, and she really inspired us. She really like like made us feel empowered and and like made us feel like like indigenous warriors, you know. And she actually asked us to do a compilation album with a guy named uh, Rick Buckman Cole, which is one of our good friends. He put up together this big album, 40 pieces, 40, 40 tracks from different artists all across Vancouver. And we made a charity album. So what actually inspired the song for us was the fact that they were trying to um, stop uh, the pipeline from being built on Burnaby Mountain and through their uh, territories as well, which could uh, 
I guess it it could like destroy their all their hunting territories if like there was ever a like a pipeline to burst or anything like that. But on top of that, there's man camps coming into their territories, and with that come uh, people being women being abused, abducted, murdered, raped, all, all you name it, like all of that. And same thing that was happening down in uh, Lilu Island, and same thing that was happening going through the Kitimat. There's people forcing pipelines, the government's forcing pipelines through our territories and putting our people at risk. And you know, there's also alter alternative routes coming through towns and cities or wherever, but they don't want to put other people in danger because they know of the effects of these pipelines and what they, what could happen. It could de destroy everything in its path if anything were ever to happen. Uh, and the song that really, or the, the event that really inspired uh, the Warriors was um, what was happening down in Standing Rock. And if you guys go look on YouTube, on the internet or anything like that and see how those people were treated during that time, that is why we wrote The Warriors. Um, yeah, it was like just a lot of like land defenders that inspired us to inspire other people. And obviously, you know, we can only speak from through our own context, but we used other people's stories and uh, made an anthem out of it. And that was the words. From people that have been dealing with oppression since the since the beginning of this country, since the beginning of colonization, since first contact, it's like. I can compare it to when there's a bully at a school and the kid that's getting bullied just takes it and takes it and takes it and takes it. And then one day they just stand up and say, you, we ain't taking this anymore. That's what the Warriors is. And that's what Tiny House is. That's what Standing Rock was. That's what Idle No More was. It was us saying no more. We're standing up. And we want some goddamn land back. <laughs> land back, land back, land back. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, for the kids that don't understand, hopefully, you know, these talks can help open, open their eyes for, you know, the real history of Canada and the States and how racism is more alive than ever. And to see that how much people deal with racism and oppression on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. And as strong as we are, we appreciate all the allies that we can get, you know, and to stand by one another and to lean on each other in these times of oppression. So the Warriors that <laughs> come out and play. For me, you know, given that the times that we're living in with COVID and everybody, like, just being isolated and separated and even when you do get to see people, you don't necessarily get to freely, like, hug them, you know? And this COVID thing, man, it's, like, really, really taking its toll on not just myself, but you know, our community and a lot of indigenous communities, you know, and mental health is like a big thing for me because, uh, you know, it's important to talk about, you know what I mean? And, uh, we lost like a lot of fam. <laughs> we lost a lot of fam during this, this winter time, man. And <sighs> some have been to like drugs. Some have been to suicide. Some have been to just, you know, cardiac arrest or COVID, you know, and it's, it's saddening, man. It's been a really, really dark winter. And I know for myself, I've been going through my own struggles of depression and, you know, my mental health. And one thing I really want to help bring to the forefront is like the importance of you know like counseling or therapy because there's this stigma around it that if you go to counseling or if you go to therapy it makes you weak when that is absolutely false you know what i mean because 
you know, I'm guilty of that way of thinking. But until I actually started doing it at the beginning of 2020. And that has been crucial for my growth mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically too. You know what I mean? And yeah, you know, it's a, it's a very serious thing, man. It's uh, to have that feeling of like feeling like a burden. You know, feeling like you can't talk to anybody, feeling like nobody understands, feeling misunderstood, and that that overall feeling of, you know, not wanting to be here on this earth is a feeling I wouldn't wish on anybody, you know. Um, I've dealt with that during this COVID, man, and I am super thankful for you know, my family, my partner, and I know, like, if I'm feeling this way, I can imagine some youngin somewhere is feeling the exact same thing, and is ready to do it, and that comes from growing up not knowing how to communicate properly, communicate your emotions, because especially as men, and, you know, for me, growing up playing sports, it was, you know, man up, man up, don't cry, man up, don't show emotion, man up, man up, man up, you know, and over the years, that takes its toll, and that really, really affects relationships down the road, whether it's, like, a loving relationship, or whether it's, like, with family, or, like, a friendship, you know, like, it, it really affects, because we're, we don't know how to communicate because a lot of us were taught to just like bottle it up, bottle it up, bottle it up. And once it's like completely full and it just shatters into pieces and that's when all hell breaks loose. That's when you go down that panic and that spiral of those negative thoughts, you know, and you know, in my, in my opinion, man, I feel like everybody could use a little counseling. Everybody could use a little therapy and, you know, it's it's important to talk about. It's important to talk about mental health. You, it's, it's something you just can't brush under the rug. I feel like had I learned how to communicate growing up, I feel like I would have handled a lot of things that I dealt with in life a lot better. You know, and that's what my goal is for not just this generation, but for the next and the next after that and the next after that is, you know, mental health it's super important man because we've lost I know like me personally like me and tribes we've lost some loved ones to suicide and it's like the worst feeling and you know for me personally feeling that not Having that feeling of, like, not wanting to be here, it sucks, man. <laughs> it sucks. You know, and I just want to let the youngest know that it gets better. <laughs> you are loved, even when you feel unloved. Even when you don't feel good enough, you're good enough. And, you know, I, it's a soft spot for me. It's a touchy spot for me, but... You know, it's, you're loved, man, more than you know, and your ancestors are behind you every single day, those days you feel like you want to give up, those days you don't want to get out of bed, those days you don't want to answer those phone calls, those texts, you're loved from people that are here physically and all the ancestors that are here spiritually. But, yeah, it's just, you know, I know it's tough sometimes, but reach out, you know, whether it's mom, dad, cousin, friend, auntie, uncle, or if you don't feel comfortable talking to 
the fam, you know, there, there's numbers you could call. There's toll-free numbers you could call, and they will talk you through it. And I know it's hard, and it's scary to reach out to somebody and to talk to them because you don't know how it's going to go. You don't know how they're going to handle it. And, yeah, it's just reach out, you know. I know it's scary, but remember, you're loved. And you are more than worthy of this love. You are more than worthy of this life. SNRK loves you. Never forget that. Above all else, SNRK loves you. You know, all you need is a pen and a pad in your mind. So it's as simple as picking up a pad and like writing down your thoughts to start off. You know, there's very simple RAM schemes, AA, BB, C, C, A, 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 it's just like, it's obviously we'd have to get into a deeper conversation about it, but it's, in my opinion, uh, it's very easy to get into. It's hard to get good at. So you have to put in a lot of time. You got to put in your thousand hours to get good at it. And right now you're in a time where hip hop is the most popular genre in the world. You know, you won't have kids making fun of you like we did when we were growing up because it was always like punk, punk rock, like that kind of stuff that was popular. Everyone made fun of like people that wanted to be rappers. But you know what? You have to put that all aside and just like focus on what you want to be, focus on what you want to do and get good at it if that's what you want. Um, also, I feel like it's very, uh, hip hop is also like the fastest evolving art form or a form of music in my opinion. It's always changing, forever changing. So you have to stick with the times and like listen to what people are listening to and make your own version of that. But also be true to yourself and who you are. Don't, don't be writing things because you think kids want you to write like that. Write what you feel. But yeah, it's as simple as picking up a pad and writing down your thoughts.